Good evening, and welcome back to the lands of Akathan. No professionals, no fancy tech, just a group of women playing an all-original game of Dungeons & Dragons. I'm Jeff. I'll be your witchy baker for tonight's unboxing of the new Easy Bake Coven. Nice. I like that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> well. I liked other ones better. No, okay. I like Easy Bake Coven. That's awesome. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we're... Uh, we're dressing for Halloween because uh, when we're recording this, it's not Halloween yet. When you're watching this, Halloween's already passed. But you know, this is this is our 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 Halloween show. So just accept it. Yeah, just roll with it. We're going to. It was last minute, and I didn't have time to prepare, and we were all last minuteers, except for me. Because I realized in advance and then sprung it on us. Well, it, I realized that I've had this outfit hanging on my on my uh, coat tree for like nine months. Mm, because this was this was what I got for us to go do conventions. Oh. And then COVID put a stop to conventions, and so we haven't done any. You're not helping yourself at all. I'm just saying. It's not at all. You know, with enough notice, we can actually birth babies. But overnight notice, we can do very little. Thank you. I like You're that. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Leslie looks like she wants to say something, but. I was. Wow. The birthing babies part. Yeah. I'm going to just volunteer that I will not be birthing the babies. <laughs> Already done, done my part for that. country. No more babies. Yeah, right. like. Well, I'm just saying that with enough notification, a lot of planning, magic can happen. Magic things happen. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna dress like this all the time now. Wigs are so comfortable. I think it works for you. I have to get my own since stingy people around here won't let me borrow one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can browbeat right. her into giving you her wig. Right. I'll just buy my own, and then she'll want it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be like tough. Too and you bad. can say no. no, right? I'm not sharing because it's too close to your scalp. Right. <laughs> say, I don't want your. So why there will be no more babies because they're brats. Exactly. <laughs> just adopt the phrase that I have: ungrateful wretch. My kid answers <laughs> to it now. <laughs> I burst you. Just give me a wig. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have one that's Spawn and the other is Ungrateful Wretch. I won't tell you what she calls herself because it's gross. Oh, uh, no. All right. We don't like that. I'll put it in that. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let me uh, bring you up to speed where we are. Uh, in uh, the last episode, we got to see the uh, the performance of the Lost Guardians of Akathen for the entirety of the campus of the Azenor School of Magic. All the students, all the faculty, the innkeeper, the uh, baker, and the groundskeeper. Everybody was there um, in a in a magically created um, concert hall. And uh, that went very well. It was definitely appreciated by the students. Tasha put on a good show. And then the four were summoned to what uh, was supposed to be a just kind of an informal Q&A, but because of the location, felt a bit more like a tribunal uh, where the uh, assembled faculty... Uh, wanted to ask questions and uh, what happened was they learned pretty quickly that all the questions they had were not questions that the four had answers to. Um, they were responsible for helping the metallic dragons reemerge into the world, but that didn't make them experts on metallic dragons, which is what the faculty really wanted to talk about. should have made stuff up. That would have been funny. You yeah, certainly could have. That's not us, though. I mean... 
Yeah. Um, and then uh, the group returned to the magician's rest where um, three of the uh, group decided to uh, uh, partake in the Nazith's demise drink, which oh. caused all three of them to pass out. Uh, first Athgar, then Tasha, then Gwen Lauren. And all three of them were uh, visited by very, very vivid dreams. And the next day, on the trip on horseback from the Tower of Asnor to Costed's Wave, they were discussing the dreams, except for Athgar, who claimed he couldn't remember his. We knew he was lying. Um, he's, he's a bad liar, by the way. He is. Especially for a person with his abilities. I think he'd be better at it. Yeah. Not really. He needs to put some more points into that. Yes. He's not really specialized in deception. So. I believed him. Should I not have? <laughs> okay. Well, you made the roll. And, I don't uh, think did it. Side the, check. The, the, the role... Oh, well, somebody did. I think it was Gwen Lauren, maybe. But uh, somebody... I, I did. It, w yeah. it was Gwen Lauren. I did. Somebody made the role. And uh, so, uh, eventually, you crossed the one of the great uh, stone bridges and made your way to Costed's Wave and to get out of the snow, made a beeline for the tavern which is the name of the tavern in Costed's Wave, um, where you were once again greeted by Duncan Nanami, who uh, runs the inn, and once he realized who you were, ran to get a message that had been left for you by uh, the captain of the Clever Sprite. And the message just read, uh, I need your help. Um... Yeah. They took the maid. Yeah, Sigrith's been kidnapped. There you go. And so Tasha contacted uh, the captain who came to the tavern and explained what had happened. And there was a brainstorming session where people were trying to figure out how to locate Sigrith so that she could be rescued. And they came up with two ideas. They had a little piece of cloth from one of the cloaks of one of the kidnappers. Uh, but they also thought of uh, the possibility of doing it uh, more naturally and uh, enlisting the help of a creature who could actually track by scent. And so they went to visit the uh, the druid who is in charge of the uh, the shrine to uh, Quisva in Costed's Wave, and uh, they were able to uh, talk to her a little bit, and then Gwen Lauren was able to talk to her wolf companion and convince the wolf to help them. Um, and so um, the wolf set out after getting a good snout full of uh, Sigrith's scent from her blanket from the Clever Sprite. And now all you have is uh, you have to wait because the wolf basically said, no, you're not coming with me. I'll be able to do this faster and more efficiently without a bunch of two legs. And so now you are in the shrine with uh, Caliban. And... What are you going to do? You're waiting for the wolf to come back. 
Um... I don't know. We're just waiting, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk with her about her relationship with her wolf. Okay. So, how is it that you came to have a wolf as a companion? Oh, I uh, saved him as a pup. Really? Found him caught in a trap. Oh. Saved him, brought him back, nursed him back to health. He just never left. He seems very loyal to you. Well, I feed him. I doubt that's the only reason why. He seems very capable of feeding himself. No, oh, yes, he can. But uh, he says that's basically why, in the beginning, why he stayed. Because uh, he'd been out hunting food when he got caught in that trap and figured it was just much easier to let me do the hunting and feeding. And he could just lay near the fire. Does he, aside from keeping you company, does he have other roles that he plays here? Oh, yes. Anytime, uh, anytime we go out... He's with me. He's become uh, something of a protector. He fancies himself a protector. I don't really need protecting. But it's nice to have company. It is. Someday I hope to have a companion like yours. So I'm very interested in how you fostered that bond. Feed him. Good advice. I'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely keep that in mind, because if you convince one of them to stay with you, then you have to feed them. Well, yes. I, I realize it's a great responsibility to have a companion like that. It's a pain in the ass sometimes is what it is. Well, that's why I've avoided having one so far. Then what's changed your mind? Um... My role has changed a little bit within my clan, and I think it might be nice to have something more stable in my life. Hmm. What clan do you hail from down at Thunder's Edge? The Lion Clan. Ah, so you're looking for a big cat? I'm open to possibilities. Maybe a maybe a falcon of some kind, or but there is something to be said for a big cat or a big dog. Hmm. Falcons are much less cuddly. Yeah, although they but can they, be affectionate. They can. They just aren't usually. Smart. Yeah. Well, I would want a pet that's very clever. You want wickedly smart. You want to get you a crow. Mm, they are. They are. Probably the cleverest birds I've come across. Agreed. Thank but you. a little less helpful in battle. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, you gotta balance, you know, what exactly. you're looking for in a companion. Exactly. I'm looking for a, a well-rounded companion. So, a pig? <laughs> Those companions tend to be um, temporary. Well, you could get a boar. Tusks. That's true. Although, while they are um, clever, they aren't particularly loyal. I think that their loyalty would be ruled by their stomachs. And I'm looking for something that um, would be loyal to me. Well, uh, I got it. I hate to break them. it to you, but uh, they're all ruled by their stomachs, at least in the beginning. That's true. I don't know. I think a, a big cat or uh, a, a wolf like yours would be a wonderful companion. They shed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of, of that. I wear dark clothes anyway, so. Okay. All right. Just so you know what you're getting into. Plus, they're warm. That's always handy. Well, yes. I do tend to get a little chilly since I'm used to a warmer climate than we've been in lately. Oh, yeah, that's true. You must be freezing. 
I have companions who are uh, human companions that are um, that help me when I when I am too cold. Oh, well, that's nice. Well, uh, you know, feel free to get as close to the fire as you want. Thank you. I don't know how long it's going to take him. How long is he usually out on a jaunt? I haven't asked him to track somebody before. So, I don't know. <coughs> do we still have... Uh, this is out of character. Do we still have food in our... With us? Oh, yeah. We always have food with us. Yeah. Well, maybe we could... Always. I mean, we could offer up some of it and say, you know, we've we've picked up some food in our travels and wondered if you might like to share some of it. I think we still have some pastries. That would be very nice. I'd love to have a meal I didn't have to make. Well, we can certainly help with that. It's the least we can do since you have loaned us your goon companion. Well, I'm not going to argue. So let's put out some food. Pastries, if we have any meat left. Okay. While this has been going on, you, uh, if you look to, to see, uh, Athgar's kind of taken himself off to the edge of the room and just kind of hunched down on the, on the floor, knees up, arms over his knees, and it's just kind of sitting there staring at the floor. At the floor? Yeah. Like he's thinking. He's brooding again. Let him think. He'll come out of his bunk. I distribute the food. And I offer him some and say would you like something to eat while you brood I'm not brooding I'm thinking would you like something to eat while you think yes that would be nice thank you so I give him what I'm serving up okay I play a little music all right just to pass the time um Arabelle, make me a perception check, if you would. Sure. Twenty-five. You're just kind of, you know, you get your food, you're just kind of glancing around the room, and you catch Athgar's eye. And he just kind of uh, jerks his head a little bit. Widens his eyes, like, talk to me for a minute. Go over and sit down next to him. Are you okay? I think so. I'm just... There's a lot to mull over. You seemed off since the Susaran camp. I mean, I don't want to pry. No. I'm not Gwen Lauren. <laughs> let's just let's just say I do it, want to pry. I just won't. <laughs> let's let's just say it was definitely not my finest hour. When one is betrayed by one's own subconscious, it's maddening. Because there's nothing you can do. I believe I understand. I was going to ask you, you've had, I think, lots of dealings with the Sasaran at this point, and I have had very little. What, what can you tell me about them? I mean, who are they as a, as a people? I mean, are they, are they noble? Not by birth, I mean, but I, in character, I, I, you hear stories. And usually they involve theft and kidnapping children. I've never seen any evidence of either of those. All of the dealings we've had with them have been 
kind. Um, I think people don't understand their ways. You know, they travel. They don't have a home like most people would understand. And when someone doesn't understand something, it tends to breed suspicion and distrust, even when that's not warranted. Oh, yes, that's true. I've seen that in back home. But and what about, well, Mother Tassa is the leader, or was the leader. Is she still the leader? No. So then this Erman is the leader now. Yes. And to some extent, Mother Tassa was the matriarch of the of the group, but I think Erman has been the functional leader where she might have been more the spiritual leader for lack of a better word. Hmm. And Culture. Is he trustworthy? I believe so. Hmm. He's... Yes, I I think he has a way about him to influence to maybe get things that he wants but not from what I've seen for malicious purposes hmm. he's very charismatic yes I I've witnessed his charisma at work and charm can be used in a lot of ways but so far, I haven't seen anything that makes me distrust him. Well, apparently I do. Everyone yeah. else was sharing their dreams, and I didn't feel like getting teased all the way to Costed's Wave. Well, that was going to happen either way, but yours was about him. Yes, to a certain extent. It was the morning, the last morning we spent with them, and I was back at the breakfast table, except this time I could see. Interesting. And then... And then it was the night before, and I could see. And people were breaking up. Sonora was helping me to my feet. Erman was leading Gwen somewhere. But in the dream, I stood up and walked over and took Gwen Lauren's hand out of Ermon's and said, no, I don't think she's going to be going with you. I think she'll be safer if she doesn't. And then I led her away and then I woke up. Hmm. So apparently, there's something about this Ermon that strikes a sour chord for me. But I can only imagine what Gwen would say. Which is why I didn't choose to talk about this to everyone. Do you think it comes from being protective of her and nothing more? Or do you think really that you distrust him? I don't know. That's that's what I've been 
trying to figure out. That's what I've been thinking about, just running it through in my head. Because, I don't know, unlike most of my dreams, this one hasn't faded in, in the slightest. It doesn't... It doesn't feel like an ordinary dream. But well, I don't know what it would be or what it would mean. I know someone maybe that we could ask about it when we get to Irma. Hmm. We have a friend that is quite familiar with the Susaran and Irmon in particular. Hmm. Well, I look forward to meeting this gentleman. I think we'll have time to ask him about it quietly and get his take. Yes, I suppose. What actually happened with Sonora? Again, subconscious, not my fault, tried to explain that. She, before we fell asleep, was very affectionate. And from what I have put together, from what little I could get her to say and not scream, she thought I was awake when I was still asleep. And she began to be... Amorous? Yes, again. And apparently, I was dreaming about being home and my childhood and I was being picked on by Gwen Lauren and I called her by name and apparently I said it out loud. Oh no. And then I woke up because she was striking me. Wow. And she refused to believe that I was asleep. I finally got out of her why she was angry. And then I made a point of trying to explain I was asleep. I was dreaming about my childhood. She didn't want to hear it. No. Well, that's not your fault. And you shouldn't beat yourself up because she didn't want to hear you. No. But I can also understand why she reacted the way she did at first, but not believe listening to but on the other hand she doesn't really know you and uh, i'm guessing never will well unfortunately it probably long term couldn't amount to much unless you're giving up your birthright so true maybe it's not the worst thing that you didn't develop a stronger connection Perhaps. But that's... That's pretty much the entirety of why I was asking about the Cesaran. Yeah, I... Yeah, I don't think the rumors and stories are true, but we don't know. I mean, it, it appears from everything we've seen that they are just travelers and there isn't any ill intent overall and we do trust their tasa hmm. implicitly and i have wait wait can i ask out of character for a second sure 
he was with us in Erma. Did she not show up as Mother Tassa before she turned into the dragon? Yeah, she did. So he knows she's a dragon. Yes. Okay. When he started asking earlier about, I was thinking he was like, does he know? So okay. no, so he was just curious if she's still going to continue in her role with okay. the Sasaran. Gotcha. Okay. I was just like trying to remember, like, does what? Who knows what? So okay. So. Yeah. No. He. Uh, right. he, he figured it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I just wanted. I couldn't remember for sure. So I just wanted to make sure before I said. So and yeah. I mean. I don't think Mother Tassa would have permitted evil behavior or motives. Hmm. And she, I think, mostly founded them, right? So when she lost her memories after the shattering. So, well, does every single person, I mean, people have their own motivations for everything. No, of course. Well, I won't tell anyone. I appreciate that. Unfortunately, now I have even more to think about. Because... I say with all humility that I consider myself a decent judge of character, but I also consider your instincts much more honed than mine at this point. I mean, I guess, Jeff, can I roll insight if I, I don't have any, I don't think I have any doubts about Ermon, right? Uh, yeah, if, you, well, you can make up your mind or roll, it's up to you. Oh, an 11. I, I think my instincts are right on. <laughs> yeah, as far as you as far as you have experienced, um, he's he uses his charm uh, like most people breathe. But he's been upfront about everything. Uh, he hasn't appeared to use it inappropriately. Yeah, it was only that first time that we met them, and that was more of a misunderstanding, I think, she's right. decided. Athgard, I, I know we've teased about this, but do you think it's because you might have feelings for her? For Sonora? I barely when know Lauren. her. No, well, when Lauren. Of course I have feelings for Gwen Lauren. Beyond, but... she's my sister, she's my friend, she's my clansmate. Do you think maybe there is something deeper there? Oh, gods. I hope not. <laughs> Don't say that to her ever. <laughs> Whatever would make you ask that? The dream that not the misunderstanding dream, but the one you had about the like, making sure you weren't just jealous. Jealous? I I don't think so. Just something to <sighs> I mean also not going to probably ever pass your father's acceptance so maybe you never thought about it either or let yourself think about it but hmm. oh I have so much more to think about and that's not something I ever thought I would even yeah. No. <laughs> hmm. 
yet. It, I, I'm going to say no. Okay. We'll, we'll consider what you've said, but... Hmm. Certainly nothing I've ever really considered. Because it's not an option, or hasn't been. Well, no. It, because she raised me. Oh, well, that might be a little creepy, then. I mean, she literally was tasked by the clan to be my 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 protector, my... Aren't you pretty close in age? Guardian. Yes. But she was... Um, how does that translate? Probably closest uh, indentured servant to the clan for most of her childhood. Uh, she did earn her right to join the clan as a full member. And now she is considered just another member of the, of the Lion Clan. But I have to say her story was very disturbing to me. She's always been... I mean, that the clan kidnaps children was... Well, the tradition in the clan is that if the clan is attacked, if they are victorious or even if they retreat, they will take captives because it strengthens the clan and it weakens the enemy. Now, just... these captives are not treated badly. They are, as Gwen chose, given the opportunity to uh, become members of a clan. But it's it's one of the more barbaric customs that lingers from earlier eras. Your outrage at Tasha's past doesn't seem to reconcile with your own clans, though. No, I suppose it doesn't. I hope that's something you consider when you're in charge abolishing. Oh, I have absolutely no intention of continuing that custom. In fact, this has not happened in, well, in over a decade. Because I made it known to my mother that I thought it was cruel. And she convinced my father to stop. Your dream, did you say that you didn't, in your dream, you didn't think it was safe just in general or safe for her? What I said was I think she would be safer with me. At least I think, let me, let me recall the dream again. Sorry, I just... Hmm. All right, I have the cadence now. No, I didn't even say that. I think it's best for all involved if Gwenlaren doesn't go with you tonight. Erman, could I suggest perhaps that you entertain Sonora in my stead? And then I led her away. Hmm. 
Maybe we're trying to avoid what happened. <laughs> Possibly. One of the things I have considered is that maybe there is lurking in the back of my mind because of my father and because of my upbringing a, a prejudice, a, an idea that people should stay within their own. I don't, we don't. think that's the case, but that is an explanation, so it is something that I've been trying to dig out of my back brain. Do you know where Gwenlaren is from? No. No. I was, I think, not even two when she was brought to the clan. Many of the battle skirmishes at that point would have been in the wastes, right? Yes. Is she Jagravanan? No. We tend no. Jagravanans are killed. They're not brought back and offered a place in the clan. Even a child? A child would simply be left to wander and fend for itself. Okay. There is absolutely no pity in the clans of Thunder's Edge against the Jagravanans, no matter what age they are. Unless, if, if they can walk, they are considered an enemy. Wow. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what clues may come about that may lend more light on your dream, shed more light on your dream. If I can find the right die, there it is. It's on the other side. Ooh. All right, hold on. I have to look at Athgar's character sheet for a second. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um... He says, I do remember some of the, the clan elders talking about before the temple became as much of a threat, there were, there were merchant clans that used to travel the desert, and there were other tribes. There was... There was an oasis that was essentially a bazaar that different traders would set up camp periodically and uh, a market of sorts would emerge. But that was long ago. Well, if her dream is any indication, we may find out more. That was a 29 on a history check. It wouldn't explain merchants battling with the clans of Thunder's Edge, though, so there must be more. Hmm. But as I said, if she dreamt about her family, maybe we'll encounter more information. Things tend to be illuminated when it's time. Well, I appreciate your counsel. Always. Thank you for your trust. Always. All right. So, Tasha, Zoroth, Gwenlaren, what are you doing while this is going on? told you I'm playing music. Right, you did say that. Just passing the time. I'm eating pastries and learning the finer art of 
um, wolf cub raising. <laughs> I'm asking about what they eat and how often, and do you have to give them baths? Yeah, and and one of the things that she makes a point of telling you is uh, how it is vitally important that you have bones or other things for them to chew on chew because on. their teeth are developing and if you don't give them things to chew on they'll chew on whatever they find which is usually your stuff this is wise counsel indeed mm. I lost enough shoes that first year I learned hmm. I certainly wouldn't want a wolf chewing these and I hold up my shoes with the wings. Hmm. Never thought about that. Magic might actually be resistant to the teeth. Maybe they would just fly out of reach. Well, I guess it would all depend on what kind of magic. I don't understand much about, uh, you know, the, the, the kinds of magic that, that you know, wizards, that those folk put into the items, but uh, I suppose if they, you know, could be uh, put, you know, like a uh, some sort of uh, protection put into them, you could actually make a pair of shoes that a dog could chew on and wouldn't hurt it. Did you do anything in particular to train the wolf to to trace, to hunt? Or no, they know how to do that. That's that nose of theirs, strongest sense they have. Nose first, then their ears. And it had no trouble learning how to hunt on his own? Nope. Nope. Actually started off just playing a game. I'd seen, you know, kids with dogs playing with, you know, fetch with, with sticks and balls and things like that, so... I just made a, a little uh, leather ball, stuck some surplus herbs in it, and turned out I was actually helping him learn how to track. Because occasionally I'd throw it and he don't see where I threw it. And then he'd just stick his nose in the air and just kind of turn in a circle, and then all of a sudden, like a shot, he'd be off toward where the ball was. Clever. Hmm? Now, do you know of anyone who who raises wolf pups or... Uh... Yeah. Used to. Really? Yeah. Uh... Up in Blenimard. Wolf clan up there, that's what they do. Raise dogs oh. for... Raise uh, canines for hunting and tracking. That was uh, before the city fell. So, I don't know now. Uh, did you know of anyone in particular? Someone I could ask for? Uh... You think so? Let me try and remember. I have to look it up because it's not in the rule book yet. Talk amongst yourselves. This will just take a minute. I like eggs. Bread? I uh, like bread. Bread is very good. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wolf Clan, a uh, member by the name of Threll. Threll. Wonderful. He Are was... we going that way by chance? I ask the others. Not right now. Well, maybe some of our where. travels will take us near the Wolf Clan. Oh, Belenimar. Oh. Is that Just far from to... here? Very far. Well, There's... maybe someday. As I understand it, sort of a uh, opposite corner of a Cathan from where you're from. Yes, that's why I don't know much about them, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that's the other... Uh, 
At least as far as I know, that's the... That's the other city that actually uh, operates on a clan system. Oh, really? Yep. Hmm. I think there's three? No, four. Four clans. There's a goat, wolf, bear, and otter. And they all raise animals? No. That's a wolf clan. Oh. Goat clan, them's the farmers. Bear clan, furriers. And the otter clan, they're the fishers. Makes sense. How clever. The bear were furriers. The otters are fishers. And the goat were farmers. Farmers, farmers that's what I thought. Gotta get it all on my thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I don't suppose... I don't know where those people would be now. You mean because of the the breakup of that area? Yeah. Uh, you, you didn't hear? They got attacked. Whole city had to flee. Yeah. Attacked by what? Uh, sounded like dragons. I hadn't heard a whole lot, but lots of fire. I yes, thought we told we've her. Seen that before. I thought we told her about the orc ship pirate fighting things. Yes, but that wasn't the attack on Bolinamard. No, but we stopped at Dark Coast Keep while we were doing that. Right. And helped the refugees. Right. So it may or may not kick in when she's hearing it. It's a lot of stuff to process. Yep. Uh, uh, Gwen Lauren, go ahead and make a history check. I didn't remember anything. Okay. I rolled a one. Yeah. Do you do you do you think this is your first time hearing any of this? <laughs> History isn't my strong suit. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, they used to have, uh, I know they had wolf pups. I think they had a few other kinds of pups, too. Are they trained? Or yep. are they, do they just raise them? Uh, well, the adults are trained. Because that's what the wolf clan does, is trains them to be... Uh, either fighting animals or uh, tracking animals or rescue animals. But uh, now the pups, they don't they don't train them till they're they're well and fully probably I think six months after after weaning them. Hmm. So well, I hope that I get a chance to check out these pups at some point. But it sounds like we're not going there anytime soon. Patience is not my strong suit either. Where are you going after you find your friend? We're going to the sanctuary. Sanctum. 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 Oh, going out to the island. Yes. Good folks out there. You'll be safe. Safety isn't something we really worry too much about, but thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> Usually people worry about being safe around us. <laughs> Why? Uh, to the to the wrong creatures, we can pose quite a threat. What's the wrong creature? Metallic dragons. Oh. Sorry, chromatic dragons. Oh, Permit. them. Well, yeah. And, well, good. Orcs. Yeah, and any of the any of the creatures that align themselves with the chromatics. Like orcs. So, um, am I to understand you've actually encountered orcs? Like, this century? Yes. Not anywhere close to here, I hope. No, it was on a ship. He 
in the river? In the ocean. Oh, good. I haven't, but we did we did kill a dragon the other day. That's true. It was it was attacking a village. So I think we're gonna have to stop telling people things because like they're so far fetched that no one will believe it. <laughs> well, no, they they know that those dragons exist. Correct, okay, but we killed one is not necessarily high on everybody's believability rate right away. I think this is where I say things like, we're sort of a big deal. Ah, yes. Yeah, well. Let's see. We were trying to cut off its head, but it was really stubborn. So I left before we finished. Now you're just pulling my leg. <laughs> Not at all. I still have blood on the bottoms of my boots. See? That's dragon blood. It got everywhere. Sure. So you messy. say so. <laughs> have you heard of the four? The who? That's fine. That's fine. Maybe you could play the song for her since we're... Her history check was a three. So, since we're waiting, I play her this song. Okay. She just kind of settles back and kind of listens to it. You get finished and she's a... Woo! That's one whopper of a tail! You're adorable. That actually happened. Of course it did. Of course it is. All right. Is it too soon to call a dragon? Yeah. Yes. We're not calling dragons today. Maybe they need an up. And then you all hear a. You look over to the door to the shrine and the wolf is just sitting there, tongue lolling out. I assume that uh, my talk with, an speak with animals has since lapsed. What's the duration? I'm looking at that right now. That will um, dictate what I tell you. There we go. get lost. Um. It is oh, 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, long up. Okay, so I will cast it again. You cast it and you uh, catch the tail end of a conversation between the wolf and Caliban, Caliban is saying in the the language of the wolf um, claim claim that there are new dragons and they killed one of the bad ones. I do not know if they killed one, but the one who also speaks to me has the blood of one of those beasts on her shoes. Perhaps they just walked through it. Huh. Really is dragon blood, huh? Yes. I told you it was. She speaks again. She does. Tell your packmate the sounds from the stringed box 
on her lap were pleasant. Tasha, our wolf friend here appreciated your playing. Oh, thank you very much. And said that the sounds were pleasant. Very kind. I have communicated your message to her and she's grateful for your words. Appropriate. I have found your friend. You have? Where, if I might ask? About as far from where her scent originated as could be while still not leaving this den. Can you lead us to her? Of course. Now do, you, go. do you know if there are armed humans? I saw no one. Other she is than alone? Passers by. I tracked her to one of the large wood caves your kind builds. Okay. I pass this message along to the others in the group and say, are you ready to go? He'll lead us. Well, we should go quickly then. Athgar climbs to his feet. Let's do it. Tell him we're ready to follow you. All right. He says, uh, I will take you to where the, where the scent stopped. Wonderful. And so he takes you out through the streets of Costed's Wave. Uh, as you travel through the streets, you realize you're going south and further west and a little bit more south and then further west until you essentially come to the fork in the road that leads west out of Costed's Wave toward the crossroads. But there is also one more road that leads along the western edge of town up toward uh, a cluster of buildings. Mm. Burr. There we go. I'm freezing. I might have to change it. Break. And he leads you through the streets up to this cluster of buildings and takes you to uh, a large warehouse in the back uh, behind which is the westernmost pier in Costed's Wave. And he takes you up to the door and says, her scent leads in here. So he uh, essentially leads you along the street uh, until you come to this road, which eventually leads down to the pier. And he brings you to right about here. Uh, which leads into a door into what appears to be a large warehouse. Um, there are uh, shuttered windows uh, higher up on the walls, but on street level there is a single door, and then a bit to the east there is a large double door that's obviously used for loading and unloading. There are a couple other buildings across the street.
but he takes you right up to this door and says, this is where her scent stops. We're grateful for guiding us here and we are in your debt. I hope you find your pack mate. Thank you. And he turns and trots back the way he came. Is the warehouse door open? Uh, it is closed. What time of day is it? Uh, probably... Late afternoon. Probably maybe an hour before sunset. And this is just one big open area or oh no it's a it's a closed building i mean it's a massive warehouse it's black because we don't know what's in there yet yes right but i mean we can't see no inside or anything no as i said there are windows higher up but they're all shuttered are they covered in glass you don't know they're right now they're covered in wood shutters rude Closed wood shutters. Yes. Is there anyone around? Uh, there are a few people here and there on the streets. Um, just, you know, folks going about their business. You, uh, mostly going home at this point. I because... stop the person who's, like, closest and say, Pardon me, do you know who owns this warehouse? Uh, no. Can't say I do. Uh, whoever it is, they do a good business. How do you know that? Well, see people coming in and out all the time, don't I? I thank you. Have a pleasant evening. You too. I ask anyone else that's nearby if they know who owns this warehouse. Okay. Um, make an investigation check. Fourteen. You don't really get it much that's useful. Uh, you get a couple old timers talking about who used to own it 20 years ago. But that person died. So probably not them anymore. That's about as much as, as you get. What are you thinking, Gwen? I'm thinking we need to see inside. I can go up and remove one of those shutters and send my owl in to scout. So that's what I do. All right. Um... Now, you realize that anybody who walks along is going to be seeing you do this. Can't Tasha make her invisible with the loot? Yes. We don't have any discussions anymore. One person makes a suggestion and it's just done. <laughs> I, I asked. <laughs> no, no, Was not it... you about being invisible. Because, like, oh. do we want to wait? Do we want to do it right now? Do we want to... Well, what do you want to do? Well, if we do it, if Tasha can make her invisible and we do it during daylight, we have a better chance of keeping watch than in the dark. It's it's good for an hour. Okay. Your shoes will definitely take that up. for that long or more. Uh, is there a place that she can um, hover? Because... Maybe behind the building? Is there an alley? Uh, actually, the building back ends to the lakeshore. That works. So. Maybe there's a better, like, you know, even fidgeting with the shutters, maybe there's a window back there versus out where everybody can see. Well, you can definitely walk around the building and take a look. Sure. Can you make me invisible now while I walk around the building? Well, I can. it only lasts for 10 minutes. Oh, I thought but you said it lasted an hour. It does. Oh, it's sorry. 
I thought it... Nope, never mind. Thinking of another spell. Okay. Concentration up to an hour. Okay, so... All right. So, stay here and I'll scout. Okay. All right. Then you uh, you feel the spell take effect, and you look down, and you can't see your hands. Um, and uh, you are now invisible. Okay. So go ahead and make an investigation check. That would be an 18. You walk uh, all the way around the building. Takes, you know, about two, three minutes. Um, you see there are, uh, you saw two shuttered windows on the street side. There are none on the ends, and there are two shuttered windows on the lake side. Okay. So I return to where the others are and I report and say would you like me to send the owl in one of the shuttered windows on the lakeside? Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, I think that's probably a little more discreet. Yeah, because it might just look like, oh, a shutter just accidentally came off in the back. No one would notice. And ooh, look, there goes that owl. <laughs> so I uh, go back to the lakeside. Okay. I just pull one of the shutters forward a bit so I don't completely open it. How do you open. get up to it? Using my boots. Okay. To... All right. Then I need you to make a sleight of hand check. Interesting. Does she get advantage since she's invisible? Nope. Only 19. So that's a 23. Okay. She don't need her no she don't need no help. You not for that one. <laughs> uh sort of feel around and 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 look at how the shutter is latched and you figure out that it's latched from the inside, but there is a gap, a slight gap between the shutters, and you can take one of your daggers and just Yep. Pop it and, and then ease the shutter open and then and, I uh, send in my owl uh, you him. ease the shutter open and you see glass I, I try to lift the glass window if it is liftable okay make an uh, yeah, I'm going to say make an acrobatics check. Athletics? Acrobatics. Acrobatics. <laughs> okay. Because this is more finesse than strength. Okay. Uh, that would be a 25. Yeah. You, I have it, a lot in that category. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of uh, semi-loud creaking but you are able to lift it enough that your owl can get in. Okay. And I give him instructions to scout as much as he can. And um, as he's scouting, tell me what he sees. Okay, you can communicate with him at a distance? I believe so. Can't I? Ah, uh, let's find out. Yes. At I any at any range, if you and it are on the same plane of existence, so I, there's I, no range to that telepathy. That's yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. 
So you get sort of a running uh, dialogue as it flies around. Big There's a shiny thing and a solid thing and a shiny thing. Big space. <laughs> Boxes. Space. Boxes. More space. Big pile of boxes. More space. Door. Boxes. Are there any creatures, humans, or other types of creatures in the space or in the boxes? Uh, mice? Want a mouse? I don't, but you're welcome to one if you'd like it. No, thanks. No creatures? No, no people like you. Just mice. Mm. And a door. Okay, and where is the door from where I am? If you... Oh, let's see. Let me get my orientation right here. It is in the direction of the rising sun. Okay. So where you are, it means if you're looking in the window, it's to your left. Okay. Meaning it's not one of the two doors on the front of the building. Okay. Because you're pretty much almost directly across from the, the double door where you're at. Okay. Continue to scout the space. I will join you shortly. Okay. And I go and um, tell the others what I've learned and ask them if they'd like to go inside the same way. Through the shutter? Through, yeah, through the window. Through the window. How are we going to get up there? Well, um, I can throw down a rope. So you didn't see anybody inside, right? Lillian did not. So should we just try and go through the door? You could. You would be spotted. It depends on if you are interested well, in being discreet. Gwen well, can carry us up and down, right? Because she's... She, she can carry as much as she can lift because that's I took her up when I had the boots on. So would we be more conspicuous trying to fly up a window or breaking in a door? Oh, right, because we're not all invisible. And it's I, I can go inside and let you in. All right, why don't you come down and unlock the door? Okay, so that's I go smart. back to the window. Check for trap or check for out on the inside, right? Like if it's law, I don't know. Oh, yeah. If they're hiding something, maybe. I open the shutters. Okay. I lift the sash. Okay. And I climb inside. All right. Behind me, I close the sash. Well, I close the shutters and latch them and close the sash. Okay. So that unless someone saw me do it, it wouldn't show that I've entered. Okay. You are about <clears throat> about 15 feet up in the air. And from your vantage point, how far is your dark vision? Um, I'm assuming 60 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how is there a place where it would say? Uh, probably uh, on your character sheet. I'm looking. Dark vision, 90 feet. Oh, yes, 90 feet. Yep. Ooh, 90 feet. Yeah, okay, that's beneficial. So, let's see. Okay. Um, you cannot, from where you're at, actually see all the way across to the front of the building. But what you can see is basically what your owl told you. There are massive stacks of various sized crates as far as you can see. Uh, you look to your left, and while you don't see whatever door 
the owl saw, you do see that there is a section where there are tables and chairs, and you can see papers. Can on I the see table. well enough to see what's on the papers? Not from where you're at. That's f- too far. So I will move stealthily. Yeah, it's like 60 feet to the nearest table from where you're at. I will move stealthily toward the front doors where they're located. Okay. Um, You will have to maneuver around the piles because they are stacked higher than you are currently vertically. Uh, The ceiling in here is about 40 feet. Okay. I mean, it's a massive space. Um, but you make your way. Are you going to the single door or the double doors? Single door. Okay. Um, you uh, make your way around to the right of the first pile. Um, actually, I suppose I could go ahead and reveal this since you can see it. Um, That's what you can see from where you're at. Um, you get to the door. Do you come down? Yes. Okay. You see uh, a thick wooden door uh, banded in thick, if a little rusted, iron. And there is a, uh, a latch and a keyhole. On the inside? On the inside. Hmm. So no way, to, no way for me to open it from the inside is what you're saying. Uh, probably not. You could try to pick it. Well, you could try um, to pick it. Let me go look at the double doors. Uh, you get over there. Same thing. Which side of the door are the hinges on? Uh, the hinges are on the inside. I use my dagger to pry the pin out of the hinges, top and bottom. Okay. Um, This is going to be a contested athletics check. Okay. So go ahead and roll athletics. Twenty-four. You get your dagger out and you get it in there and you start prying and you get it to move about an eighth of an inch and then it feels like it's stuck on something. Hmm. You also do see a fair amount of rust on the hinges. I mean, this is right up against the lake, so... I need a can of plus four WD-40. <laughs> yeah. Um, or maybe a bottle of Coke. <laughs> All right, so this is not working. Let's see. Um, I guess I will try the hinges on the other side. See if I have better luck. Okay. Make another roll. Nope. It's only an eleven. Yep. These that the those hinges you can't even get to move the okay. little bit that the other one did. I guess I'll try to pick the lock. <laughs> this isn't my area of expertise, but what the hell? We'll give it a go. Okay. Uh, what do I need to do for that? Um, that's... Tasha, that's sleight of hand, isn't it? To pick a lock? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I look at my cheat sheet, and it says pick a lock. So. 21. 21. You... 
get in there. You're doing this, I assume, with your daggers? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you get in there and you realize that this is an intricate lock and you have the wrong tools. Okay. Daggers are not going to work for this particular lock. Can we hear her dig them around with the lock out front? Uh, make a perception check. I got a natural 17. 30. Oh, well, it's not that good. Yeah, you hear somebody messing about. You hear somebody (laughs) messing about with the lock, and Arabelle, you actually hear Gwen Lauren swearing under her breath. Sorry, do you have lock picks? I do have these tools, but I'm on the outside here. Yeah, you're all on the outside. But it's not working for Gwen Lauren. So. We might just have to Help hope her. we don't get noticed. Can you try the door? Hold on one second. Um, okay. Uh, yes, I will thieves tool it, but how do we hide me? I look around. Is anybody watching us? No, because right now it looks like you're just a group of four people just sort of, you know, hanging out on the corner, having a chat. Oh, right. Athgar is here, too. Let's yep. forget Athgar. Um... That's okay, he's used to it. Um, yeah, you guys keep a lookout. I will try to stealthily slide a fan. All right. All right. What do you want first? Slide of hand or stealth? Uh, probably stealth first. Uh, but I would I have... say you have advantage on this since you have three other people who are uh, positioning themselves to sort of block sight of you. 25, okay. sleight of hand. Or 25 or stealth, whichever one, it's the same number. 17 plus 8. Stealth is the first one, so. Okay, so it's 25. Okay. And then the second one is 16 plus 8, 24. 24. You get in there. This is the most complex lock you've ever encountered that you've tried to to open. Mm -hmm. And you work on it for a good minute and a half, two minutes, and you think you've got it, and then you hear tink! And you realize that one of your lock picks just broke. Oh, son of a motherless whore. You hear my muffled voice from the other side of the door saying, we could just burn it down. (laughs) That's your answer for everything. No, Um, we could not. I, um... like ray of frost to make the doors like skinnier or something to they're metal or wood doors they're wood doors iron banded Mm -hmm. she froze Mm -hmm. the um, hinge would that help could I break the pin Mm, I don't think freezing it would help Well, I mean, like... To be thwarted by a door? We could. Al- I could always put acid splash on the back side of the thing and just walk in. Do you guys just want to come in the same window I did? 
I think at this point, just come get it. Yeah. 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 We'll all walk around casually to the back. Okay. So I will reopen the sash, unlatch and open the shutters. Throw. Do you want me to throw down a rope or do you want me to come down and get you? Is anybody watching us? Uh, make a perception check. Can I too? Yeah. Ooh. I'd like to as well. 17 again. Perception, 22. 23. 28. Uh, let's see. Uh, Athgar got 21. So you you uh, you wait until uh, the latest person turns the corner and for a moment there's nobody else on the street we turn around and book it to the back okay <laughs> all right so you get to the back the window is about throw... 15 feet up do you want me to throw down a rope or come down to get you I'll be using message with you because we probably can't just talk through the thing. Sure. I mean, the window's open and I'm sticking my head out, so. Oh. It's only however many feet. Yeah, about 15 feet. Well, about, oh. about 10 feet between you and their heads. So, right. 10, 12 feet. So, you can hear me. Fine. How long do the boots work? Two hours. I just looked. Oh. <laughs> Two hours out of every 12. Can you carry everybody? One at, One a, time. at a time. Well, I meant even with that. I think I can. No, it's four hours. You can use the boots for flying up to four hours. Okay. The boots regain two hours of flying capability for every 12 hours. Oh, right. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. I saw the two hours and thought that was duration. Nope, you're right. Yeah, you've got four hours. I'll fly down and get Tasha. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll just fly down and that get That way it. she can cover our backs. Sounds good. And I fly her back up. All right. Then I get Zori. And then I get Arabelle. Then I get Athgar. Okay. All right. This is going to be... A little more challenging, but hang on. All right. Well, it it takes a good five minutes or so to get everybody down and up and over and in and get sealed back up. But eventually, you are all standing uh, right about... Wrong cursor. Right about here. And you are all I... looking around at this massive warehouse full of crates. I do close and latch the shutters and put the sash back down after we're all through. Okay. And, and... As, as you look around and realize there's no sound... Except the faint squeaking of mice. That's where we're going to take our break. Oh. Ah. So, uh, stick around. We'll figure out what's going on in this warehouse after uh, about 15 minutes. So, uh, enjoy your break, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Yeah.
and welcome back. All right, so you are all in the warehouse. It is dark. It is quiet, other than the sounds of mice occasionally. What would you like to do? I listen. Me too. All right. Make a perception check. Ooh. 28. 19. You don't hear anything different than what you had already been hearing. I tell them about the presence of the door. Okay. Um, I and try to pick the lock. Enough. Well, huh? We don't know where the door is yet. Oh. So I'll scout ahead. I must know where the door is from the description. You I know it's over that way. Okay. Into the dark area, right? Yeah. Try not to make the floor squeak because they'll know we're here. You now see the tables. Okay. Do we want to look at the papers on the tables? Yes. Okay. Um, you look through the the parchment, and pretty much it seems to be bills of sale. What are they selling? Uh, depends. Uh, some of it's textiles, some of it's dried foodstuffs, salted meats, uh, blacksmithy tools. Nothing out of the ordinary for a warehouse. Okay. What are the, like, dates? How recent are these from? Uh, make an investigation check. Nice. Smart. Eleven. Um. You, f you, you quickly page through some of them. Uh, the most recent one's about two weeks old. Should we move to this door? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Gwen Lauren, you move forward and discover uh, a wall. Going to move down the wall. Okay. All right. You move down the wall and you see uh, it looks like there's a room in the back corner. With a door. Yeah. But as you... Hold on, don't move yet. Oh. Stay where you were. As you step into that space... Uh, okay, why isn't it letting me do the thing here? Thing, do the thing! Oh, that's... Am I still invisible? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh! What the hell are those? As you step forward to the edge of, uh, to the corner of the wall, the three box, uh, the three piles of crates slowly begin to move and shift, and they rise up and take on uh, a bipedal form 
and you see three enormous creatures made of crates that appear to be connected by some sort of magical current. The and brick? you all now need to roll initiative. Okay. Nine. Nineteen. Also 19. Hold on. Not there yet. Too many things to look at. Um, I feel oh. that way a lot. Okay, nope. All right, Tasha. 19. Zora. Nine. Arabelle. 19. And Gwen Lauren. Didn't hear you. 22. 22. I heard you. Of course you did. (laughs) Well, uh, you'll be happy to know that all of you go before it does. Or they do. Yay. Uh, Even with a nine? Yeah. They don't look very limber. No. No. They're massive, but... They're boxy. probably pretty slow. Yeah, it's like the Volvos and crazy people. They're boxy, but they're good. You know. Boxy, but good. Right. So, uh, up first, we have both Gwenlaren and Athgar at 22. Okay. I am going to cast Lightning Arrow. And fire at the one between me and the door. Or I guess the one, yeah, it's sort of near the door. Okay. So this one. So let's see. Um, They get a deck save of 16. Okay. And then I just need to um, do a ranged weapon attack, right? Yep. And I'm trying to remember, is that physical plus electrical or just electrical? Um, It's, let's see, it is. Like, does it transform the arrow into electricity or does it carry an electrical charge? It transforms the arrow into electricity. All right. Yeah, it's a bolt of lightning. So you make the attack as normal. The target takes 48 lightning damage on a hit or half as much in a miss. Okay. Well, you fire then, the you fire the arrow and you see it strike the creature and you see the energy from the arrow for lack of a better term it seems to be sort of dispersed amount uh, like throughout that magical field. Mhm. That's... Are any of the other creatures within 10 feet? No. Okay. Not yet. So anyway. it didn't do any damage? Doesn't appear to have done anything. <sighs> okay. Then, um, do I still have my movement? Yes. Um, so I am going to move... Here. Okay. Let me go ahead and open this up then. All right. Uh, um, no, okay. Uh, Athgar is going to cast uh, Chaos Bolt. The one closest to him. Okay. 
and it hits it. Woohoo! For two die eight damage. Ooh, wow, a whopping four. Hmm. You see it strikes the creature, and the creature jolts a little bit. But it's it seems very odd that the creature makes no noise at all except this faint crackling of magical energy. That's the only sound coming from these things. Arabelle and Tasha both go at 19. And Tasha, I'm going to assume you were actually closer. Okay. Because you didn't move your token from when we were looking at the tables and stuff. Oh, okay. So. Um, I'm going to cast Shatter. Okay, go ahead and move yourself to where you want to be first, so... that close? Yeah. Well, they just appeared. Like, we were... The, 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 basically, the stack of crates uh, that they were edging around cohesed and got up. So... So yes, they are that close. Well, then I can't cast that because they would hurt them. It's just like a ten-foot radius sphere. Uh, these they're things... bigger than ten feet, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. Aim up, and it, you don't even have to do that. I mean, these things are like you know thirty feet tall. Okay. And like you know twenty feet around, so. It's you can throw it and not catch anybody else. Okay, then I then I do. Okay. So it's con save sixteen. No. points of damage. All right. You hear this incredibly loud crack of thunder and you see uh, some of the crates that make up the creature crack from the sound. So it definitely appears to have structurally weakened Good. the creature a bit. Arabelle. I would like to move to flank this creature. Okay. Should be able to do. Yep. And I will hit him with my sword. All right. Hopefully twice. We will see. 17. That hits. Yep. Second hit will be... Ooh, very nice. 19, uh, 26. Uh, that will also hit. All right. I'm using my frost brand longsword. Do you want the damage separate, the cold damage from the slashing or all together? Uh, you can give it to me all together. First attack. It's crap. Uh, first attack is six. All 
right? Second attack is nine points. All right. The first attack, you lash out and catch it in uh, one of the crates that makes up its foot, and uh, it cracks it. The second attack, you swing around and hit the uh, the other leg, and it basically caves in one side of one of the leg crates. Cool, cool. Zorith. I'm done. You are muted. No. <laughs> I'm going to cast Eldritch, Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. I don't even know how she says it now. <laughs> um, uh, on one for each of them. You okay. get three beams at 11 level. All right. Go ahead and yeah. roll to hit for each beam. Uh, nine plus, what am I trying to hit? Nine plus, hold on. Oh, 19 plus 10. That will hit. 26. That will hit. 22. And that will hit. 1d10. Okay. Five on one, five on another, two on the one that's taken the most damage. Okay. Does it actually do damage to them? It appears to. You see wood splintering. Where the where the the attacks hit. I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Um, twenty four. Fifteen. Fifteen will hit. Fifteen again. These things are very very large. Uh, six. Seven and eight. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Nice. Yeah. All right. Now it's their turn. Why do I have a feeling this isn't going to go well for us? It's not. It's not going to go well for anyone. So, uh, let's see. I'll do it this way. Okay. The the one uh, next to Athgar and Zorath swings at Athgar. And hits him both times. And uh, slams him and actually sends him flying back 10 feet. He's now on his butt. And he took uh, 28 points of damage. How many? 28. Two eight? Yes, two eight. I really don't want to set this place on fire, but I swear to God, I guess if I have to. Uh, the second one... Uh, moves... over to attack Arabelle. And 
hits once. For 13 points of damage. And the fourth one. Fourth one? Or third one, sorry. I was <laughs> like, just like, wow, I didn't see a fourth one, but. The third one moves up and attacks Gwen Lauren. And misses on the first swing, but hits on the second. For 17 points of damage. Ooh. Yeah, basically you're being clocked by, you know, a four foot by four foot by four foot wooden crate. Jeez. Yeah. Because <clears throat> the thing is just swinging its arm. All right, back to the top. Gwen Lauren and Athgar. Hmm. Um. I'm going to cast Conjure Barrage. Okay. And throw one of my arrows up in the air and then attack the one that just attacked me um, with that spell. Okay. So that does... I think it a dex saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of 16. And... Uh, that'd be a big no. A cone of arrows flying toward it. Okay. Each creature within the 60 foot cone. So is there a way that I can aim it so I can get more than one? Yeah, you the, you can get two in a row. I mean, yeah. Let's do yeah. that. Can I get the one in front of me and the one uh north of no. me? No. <laughs> well, so um, just the not two. if you want to move first. Okay, yeah, I'll move. Okay. So, like this? Uh, you'd have to move, like, here. Okay. Nope, one up from there. One up? Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise you'll step out of its threat range and it gets an attack of opportunity. Okay. But, yeah, you can move there and then you can get that one and the one. Okay. Um, well, hold on. Uh... You're going to get Zorith, too. You're either going to get Zorith or Arabelle if you do that. Um, can I stand? Well, no, here? I guess you could angle up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll aim. Um, <laughs> make an oops. Arcana check. A what? An Arcana check. Okay. Um, 16. Okay. Yeah. You quickly think through the spell and visualize exactly where the effect is going to take place and figure out how to angle it so that you won't catch either of your comrades. Trying, trying to aim it, like, here. Yeah. Okay. So, go ahead and roll the damage. Both of them failed their saves. Oh. Okay, so let's see. Three D eight. Seventeen points. Oof. Do I do it a second time for the other one, or is it for the? Both it's ones? the same damage for both. Okay. Good. All right. Well, the one that attacked you uh, looks like it took some damage. The other one, uh, basically the contents of most of the crates are now spilling out of it, out of them. <laughs> so you've got, you know, a floor covered in, you know, dried beans and, you know. <laughs> Tools. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Well, Afgar is going to uh, use half his movement to stand up. And then we'll try something a little bit more powerful. Ah, okay. He's going to spend the rest of his movement to move there. And then he's going to cast Cone of Cold at 6th level. Definitely going to need some more dice. All right, so let's see. They're going to get... Uh, con save. Okay. So let's see. One of them saved, one of them didn't. All right. So. All right, he slams the cone down through the area between Gwynlaren and Arabelle, catching the two in that area. Um, the one next to Gwynlaren now looks as damaged as the one next to Zorith. Um, the other one is showing some definite wear, but it seems much more structurally sound. All right. Uh, Arabelle and Tasha, I think. Yes, Arabelle and Tasha. Again. You're muted. Cast Shatter again. Okay. Same one? Yeah. All right. And the save is what? 16 con. Uh, that would be a no. Fourteen points. with a tremendous boom again, you basically see the creature come apart in every conceivable way. The magic that seems to be attaching all of the crates together sort of flies away in sparks, and all of the crates uh, become wooden shards amidst whatever was in them as that creature is destroyed. Well done. So, um, so, um, Arabelle. I'm gonna hit the one that hit me. Okay. I'm going to hit it. Attempt to hit it with a guiding bolt. Okay. <clears throat> 18 to hit. That will hit. Oh, I should hit it with inflict wounds. 
For 20 points of damage from Guiding Bolt. Okay. The glistening bolt slams through the midsection of it, basically caving in the chest crate. And you hear lots of loud thuds as hammers <laughs> fall to the floor of the warehouse. And it does have a mystical dim light glittering. And the next attack roll has advantage on that target. Okay. Zorath. So only some of the hammers come out and fell sparkly for the next person to hit it? Yep. Excellent. I am going to Eldritch Blast it with three bolts this time. Okay. Two, two, two bolts. Mm, two bolts. Okay. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't and then cost any more, any less. send the third to the other one? Oh, let's do that. Okay. I'm an idiot. Nah. 27. That will hit. 24. That will hit. 16. That will hit too. And then nine, six, nine. You see Zorith casting with a, a confidence that's new. There's, uh, you've seen her cast before, and she kind of winced when she casts. There's none of that this time. She casts. She just goes, boom, boom, boom. And uh, there is, again, uh, a loud uh, boom. Not thunder, but of sundering wood as both of the other two fall oh. to ruin. Oh, I got them both. You got them both. Wow. Dang, I was prepared to go for, oh, then I can, I don't have to, yay, I can take some of those back. Sweet. Well done. Like, how loud was it? Like, they probably heard that in the next town. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just checking. Well, we're probably in the right place. Seems like maybe somebody didn't want us to come in here. Hmm. So move around over to the door area. Mm-hmm. All right, move yourself wherever you want to be. I need Tasha pick that lock. Pick that lock. Or me, I guess I could try. I have a plus eight in that. Do you have sleight of hand into the stealth? You are six. The stealth is 12, but your sleight of hand is six does not matter to me. You try. I will try. Well, then get out of the way. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm at the door. There we go. Hold on. <laughs> Pull out a different tool. Since the other one, ting, broke enough thing. Right. Afgar, how's your ass? Sore. <laughs> but I'll I'll live. Good to hear. As soon as the internal bleeding stops, I'll be fine. <laughs> internal bleeding? How hard did you land? It wasn't the landing, it was the impact. Uh, I think I broke a rib. Really? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. It hurts. He took 28 points of damage. He took a quarter of his hit points in, in two hits. Oh. We need to heal. 
Yeah, maybe we should give him a little healy healy loves. Well, I he can he heal himself. Uh, well, uh, why aren't you healing yourself? I was working on that. Well. Is it contested? Is it uncontested? How do I roll for this? Uh, you it's it's got a difficulty class, so you just roll. Ugh, sixteen. Yeah, you cannot figure this lock out. There you go, Tasha. Try to try to roll better than me. Okay. I mean. Try to pick it better than me. Okay. Oh. Nat 20. Nice. 26. Okay. You work with it, work with it, work with it, and then you hear click. Click. I listen at the door. All right. Make a perception check. Already then. 30. Um, you think you hear breathing? Okay. But you're I not sure. The door. You. I have my goggles on. Okay. You open the door. I was looking to see if I had a a token. Sure, we'll use this one. And you see, uh, tied to a chair in the center of the room, eyes closed, not moving, Sigrith. Okay, I go in cautiously with my sword out, looking for anybody who might harm me. All right, make a perception check. 30. As far as you can tell, it's just you and Sigrith. So go ahead and move yourself in wherever you are. You don't see or hear anyone else. I say, she's in here. Do you need help? Okay. Yes. Zorith and Gwen Lauren. Yes. You hear Tasha say she's in here. Okay. Arabelle, you don't hear anything. Athgar doesn't hear anything either. Well, that's weird. So I say back, do you need any help? Yes. Um, hold on. Hey, Tasha needs help. Let's go in. Um, wrong one. I'll turn and that look one. around. Um, I am standing there and sort of like watching and kind of, you know, trying to peer in the room and. I see Gwen Lauren's lips moving, but I don't hear anything. 
but you heard me a moment ago. Tasha, come back. Do I hear her? Yes. I come back. Dathgar? Haribo? And you see him look at you and go... And I, I motion to Arabelle, and she's, oh, sorry. And, like, motion, like, like yeah. point to her, and then, like, her ear also. Like, can you hear me? So, I grab Athgar's pal. Yeah, like, the front. Mm -hmm. And I put him where I was. Like, I switch places with him. Okay. Can you hear me? That's smart. And uh, Arabelle, Zorath, Tasha, you see Gwen Lauren go. And Athgar looks and says, No, no, I can't hear you. And you can hear him. I can hear him. No, they can hear him. That's pretty cool, so... There's a zone of silence. A cone of silence. Oh, so she can't retaliate. Because she is a pretty powerful person. Can I extrapolate where it is? Make an arcana check. <laughs> Can I use guidance? Mm hmm Not bad, not bad. 19. Interesting. It seems like there's some sort of line of... Uh, indicating where sound can be heard, but it's like it's a barrier. On one side you can hear, but on the other side you can't, and it goes both directions. And it appears to be, at least from what you've seen, running right along the outside wall of this room. I would like to cast Dispel Magic. I'm <laughs> doing that, I step into the same spot Athgar is and sit and yell in his ear, can you hear me now? Ah! Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, Ow. Man. You're welcome. <laughs> I didn't, thank you. Oh, no. At least you know you're not deaf. I could hear myself. I knew I wasn't deaf. I thought you were deaf. I thought you had been struck silent. That would never happen. Hope springs eternal, Gwen. Well, I rolled a 19 for my charisma check. Okay. Um, hold on a second. It's... Okay, so, yeah. Um, you finish the spell, and you feel, uh, actually, you and uh, Zorath and Tasha all feel kind of like the same popping feeling in your ears as when you go up high. That's the, the only seeming result. Better. I go in. Well, Gwen says, go get her. 
and you three hear her say that. Oh, good. I touch her shoulder and I say, it's Tasha. She appears to be unconscious. Okay. She does not look well. I will follow. She is pale. She is sweaty. Mm. She is shaking. Mm. And she is unconscious. I'm going to do a medicine check first. Okay. What are you trying to discern? Um, if she's injured or poisoned or cursed or... In shock. What kind of... What's the primary thing that oh. I need to focus on? Twenty-five. You are able to ascertain that the 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 pallor of her skin and the sweat and uh, the shaking is because she's running a very high fever. But what the cause of the fever is, you can't ascertain. <clears throat> Then I'm going to start with Lesser Restoration, I think. All right. <clears throat> what are okay. you attempting to remedy? Poison. OK. Actually, actually. Take that back. I'm going to use lay on hands. Okay. So as an action, I can touch a creature to restore any number of hit points remaining in the pool or use five hit points to cure a disease or neutralize poison. Ooh. Okay. Are you attempting to neutralize poison? Um, yeah, I'll start there or cure disease. <clears throat> okay. I'll use the five first to see if that makes a difference. All right. Um, you lay your hands on her and concentrate on channeling the healing energy of Terora through her body to remove any toxins. And <clears throat> uh, you feel the energy flow out through her body and uh, you think you feel it actually connect with something and drive it out of her system. She still look in unwell? Yes, but if it was a toxin, it's not going to be an instantaneous right, right. recovery. Saying if she's still down hit points, I would continue to use. I would continue to help keep my hands on her and continue to pour the okay. pool into her until she. Um, you spend another twelve points. Okay. And uh, you see her eyelids fluttering. Cigarettes. What? No. I will not. No. No. It's Arabelle. We've come to rescue you. I'm... You are not fooling me again. No. I will not tell you. We should get you back to the Sprite. Captain Yorobi is very anxious to have you back on board. I don't believe you. 
Don't worry, Araman's not with us, so there won't be any flirting. See if that works. Let's find out. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Yeah, that would be a good way to... <clears throat> Twenty-six. <laughs> well then, Arabelle. I put my arm around her. Is, and is it help. is it actually you? It is. Natasha and Zorath and our friends, Asgar and Gwenlaren. Come to get you out of here. I just kind of, you know, got my arm around her to support her. Thank You're safe. Thank God. Uh, this was not the best time I have ever had. Do you think you can walk? I am certainly willing to try. Help her stand. She's very weak. Get on the other side. Okay. The, with the boots? Water? Yes, please. Give her some water. <clears throat> the, the water seems to help almost more than the healing did. You imagine they kept her pretty dehydrated. I can carry her and fly with her back up to the window. Cigarette no this reason part. to not just go through the door. They're still get, locked. We can't get the door open. Really? Yeah. That's why we didn't come in through the door. Rude. So, I'll, I'll fly her back up and um, take her through the window. Well. Can you unlock the door? I... I'll just try. As you bring her out of the room... You hear a voice say, Uh-uh. That's ours. Alrighty. Nobody invited you. Leave her here, and leave however the fuck you came in, and we'll let you walk. Otherwise, time to meet your maker. And you see stepping out of the shadows... Well, they have numbers, so that's not good. <laughs> it's going to take me a minute. There's snails? I keep thinking about the chocolate. The hot chocolate snail. Dang it! <laughs> the hot chocolate snail? <laughs> <laughs> The poor hot chocolate snail that just goes... Oh, so he said yeah. that as they all step out of the shadows. Yep. Zori. Oh. Zori. Oh. What do we... S Nine baddies and... Three Twelve more. baddies? Three something else. Do we recognize <clears throat> it? Uh, no. <clears throat> you see <clears throat> nine figures in shining silver full plate armor with uh, gray cloaks, helmets, uh, gauntlets, boots. They are armored from head to toe. And behind them... Uh, hold on, let me grab my... my thing here. Behind them... <clears throat> I believe there's been some kind of misunderstanding. You see a male red tiefling uh, wearing leather clothing and carrying a battle axe and a shield. You see a 
uh, a woman, a female human, in uh, sort of a dirty green robe with a staff. And you see uh, a female dwarf dressed in uh, loose clothing. Uh, with her hands up like this. Wait. Like what? You can let like us this. pass. Or they will burn this place to the ground with you in it. Your choice. <laughs> it's not our warehouse anyway. I'm wondering... If this isn't all a big misunderstanding. Well. Yes, and that. <clears throat> and I'm going to roll, um, something. <laughs> Hold, please. Persuasion. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, it doesn't hurt. Right. We're not at, we're not at. We're, We're not, not at odds yet. Nobody's oh, thrown anything. I got a natural 18. Plus four. 22. And whilst I'm talking, I hope everyone is preparing themselves to fight if need be. I I whisper to Athgar, are you healed yet? A little. Is your rib broken? No, not anymore. It's sore, but I think it's intact. So... Zorath says that, and the figure in leather clothing, the, the red-skinned tiefling, steps up directly behind and between two of the guards and looks forward and says, Really? Is it Park? No. It's a male. Well, we're seeing all sorts of tieflings all over in this. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, the amount of guards that you have for this one person seems to be overkill. And so I'm thinking that we have come to some kind of misunderstanding. Yeah, no. She's ours. You're trying to take her. What do you want with her? She it's none of your fucking to business. No one. Let well, her go. Leave the way you came in. And we'll let you walk. Leaving without our friend that you're holding against her will. Kill him. She... Mm. And roll right. initiative. Mm. Well. Mm. Okay. 17. All right. That's right. I always forget. <laughs> well, okay. Athgar gets advantage on initiative rolls. Gwen Lauren. 31. Oh, gods. Arabelle. I rolled well. <laughs> uh, apparently. You did. <laughs> um, uh, 18. And Zorath. Uh, I actually got 19. I got 23. Wow, nice. All right, let me finish rolling for them. Okay. Uh, well, to, which should be a surprise to no one. Gwen Lauren goes first. I cast as a bonus action Zephyr Strike. Okay. And then Conjure Barrage. Okay. So, um, let's see. With the Zephyr Strike, I move 
here. Okay. I aim at the guy who is primarily at the guy who is talking. All right. But um, Conjure Barrage uh, produces a cone. Mm -hmm. so How wide? I want, it is mm -hmm. a um, 60 foot cone. 60 foot wide or 60 feet long? It, it just says um, it's from me to 60 feet. It doesn't say how wide it is. It just says a 60 foot cone. I assume that's 60 <clears throat> feet no. at, the, at the furthest end. Right. So, hold on, let me. So I wanna position myself to get as many of them as I can, including the guy who is talking. My primary targets are the three of the three of them who are not guards, if that makes sense. All right. Uh, hold on. So, like, here. To here. Um. Oh, you have that cool thing. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Hate that. Me too. There we go. So that's that. Starting it there. All right. That's who you're going to be able to get. I'm okay with that. So all of them need to um, make a deck save of 16 or better. All right, let's see. So Go ahead and roll the damage. Okay, so that's 15 points of regular arrow damage. Mm -hmm. And then seven points of force damage. So what's the total? Uh, 15 plus seven is 22. 22. Okay, so... All right. <clears throat> the spell goes off, and you manage to uh, drop two of them, um, and you see it strike the rest of them. Okay, and since Zephyr Strike is still up and allows me to move extra fast, mm -hmm. um, can I still move again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then... I move here. Okay. 
All right. Then we move to Zorath. Okay. Well, um, she did take out a couple of them, right? Yeah. Two. Two. Okay. And well. the other, the other three of the of the plate mail soldiers took damage. Did the people behind them take any damage? Mm-hmm. They did. Okay. A little. I mean, we don't have time for this. So, I hope get out your 60-foot cone damage. And I'm going to angle mine. Oh, I don't have an arrow. Nope. Come now. And I'm going to get this way as much as I can this way. And what are you casting? Cone of Cold. Cone of Cold. Okay. At fifth level. All right. Right, that's who you're gonna hit. Do it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, I gotta look to see how many is eight d eight. Wow. Con sixteen. Freezing their asses. Fuck it. It's hard to talk so big when you have icicles in your undershorts. Great. <laughs> Can kiss Elsa's ass. She's a little mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, it's gonna kick kick kill you. <laughs> you're coming to kick kill me. Five, six. Seven. I have rolled really well. Eight. Ha! I have rolled incredibly well. Awesome. What a good time for good rolls. I think I might have accidentally hit a... I'm gonna add it up again, just make sure. Okay. Yep. 48 points of damage. Oof. Each? Yes. That's Let's amazing. See. I'll have what she's having. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage did you do? Like 17. Oh. No, well, 22 20, with the force 20, damage. 22. Oh, nothing like what you just did. Your, your hits are harder. I know, we just don't have time for this. I understand. <laughs> You're living up to the white hair tonight. You, you've got that whole, you know, angry Elsa thing going. <laughs> <laughs> Let it snow. Let it snow. <laughs> All right. After the <laughs> after the blast dissipates, you see that there are uh, no more guards between you and the three other characters who are uh, covered in frost. 
Are they looking surprised at all? Uh, pissed. I quicken. I take a few steps forward. No, oh. actually, let me pick myself up. Are you going to do it again? Need to see how much I need to go forward. Oh, no, I've got plenty of room by mistake. I cast Chain Lightning at level six. Okay. And where yeah. is your anchor? Like, who's the first um, hit? It will be on this person. Okay. And then how how close do they have to be to each other? Uh, good question. Thirty feet. Yeah. Uh, each of which must must be within thirty feet of the first target. Hold on, let me let me. Three bullets then leap from that target to as many as three other targets, each of which must be within 30 feet of the first target. That's so you can get the three that were in the back and the closest guard. Sounds great. Let's aim for those guys. Okay. Dex 16. I won't roll as well this time, but... Hope strength eternal. We can hope. I just have more now this time. As good, but good. D8s like me. More dice, less damage. 46? Yes. 25 and 21, each five. So if, if none of them make their saves, they have to take half of 46. Right. I keep pressing the wrong thing. Half as much damage on the successful one. One additional bolt leaps from the first target to another target for each slot level above six. Yep. Yeah, okay, good. So that's all the guys that I'm trying to get. All right. Uh, you see it arc through all four of them. And they all look pretty burnt. The... Uh, the guard that you hit is more black on the outside than silver now. Damn it. But they're all still Sorry. Up. You know, you're softening them up for for the rest. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're Maybe doing now's the time to throw down your weapons so that you might live to see the rest of the evening. And you see the uh, tiefling begin to foam at the mouth. And he charges you. Oh, I was just going to say before my end is up, I'm going to step back. Well, okay, then he goes here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I do say out loud, perhaps the rest of you would like to... Uh, what did I say? Live. Throw down your weapons so that you may see the rest of the evening. And he swings the battle axe at your head. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Uh, so the first hit is 
for 10 points of damage. Okay. The second hit is a crit. Okay. For 21 points of damage. Okay. And is he done? Yep. I shake my head and I just look at him and I get a really evil grin. Should have swung harder, little man. So much smack. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, next up is Athgar and Arabelle at 18. So, ladies first. Let him have it. All right. I am going to cast... Um, Aura of Vitality. All right. And then I am going to use my bonus action to heal Zori with it. Which is uh, two dice six if you want to roll against me, Jeff. Sure. I rolled kind of crappy, so hopefully you roll better. Uh, I got rolled a seven. Okay. You get 12 points back from that. And I cannot move because I am trapped. So. All right. Then I am done. And Athgar is going to move here and cast Cone of Cold up along all of these five. Nice. So let me figure out their saves. Is the here. tiefling taller than me? Uh, yes, actually. Even better. <laughs> he'll block all the all the cold. Huh? No, so she's just block the, the cold? She's, she's just giggling about calling him little man. <laughs> See, I I know I know a little bit how Nikki's brain works. <laughs> That's a scary thing. <laughs> Wonderful thing. Uh, I just didn't know Zori was so good at talking smack. I have a whole new respect for her right now. Right? Ooh, okay. I have a tendency to be sassy after somebody hits me. That's been proven. Yeah, that's true. All right. We got hit a lot when we were growing up. Uh, you know, just... Of course, also, it was like somebody picking on me and then saying, like, come get it. And then my brother, like, picking them off from the distance. <laughs> Not actually killing them, though, because he doesn't like that. But I seem to have no troubles with it. All right. I'm good with it. So, let's see. Uh... Go, Asgar. Go, Asgar. Go, go. Um... Managed just to drop two more of the guards. That's not horrible. And then... And does damage to the two other characters, but that's it. Um, all right. Uh, Tasha, you go the same time as one of them. Synaptic static on the berserker, on the tiefling. The inch team.
All right, he made his save. So half a 35. 17. All right. And then... Okay. <clears throat> you see... Hold on, let me see if I can actually figure out how to do this. Uh, probably that color. Okay. didn't show up very well. Let me try it in a color that's easier to see. You see the uh, the the figure in the the dirty green robe uh, cast a spell and uh, you see uh, suddenly a wall of stone form around you. Uh, it's twenty feet high. And it's basically isolated you from the rest of the room. Although it did trap the tiefling in there with you. Who? Nikki? Everybody. Everybody but Athgar is stuck now. But Athgar, I was just going to ask. So Athgar's been singled out? No. He just, yeah, he just happened to be out of the range of putting that wall up. Yeah, I can't see the wall, but... No. Oh. Really? Really. Yeah, I can't see it. It's okay. I'll refresh. Yeah, refresh and let me know if it oh, actually wait. works. There it is now. Okay. So, basically, this traps us with the tiefling. Yeah. But How it also tall is keeps... it, did you say? 20 feet. <sighs> and you hear, uh, coming from the other side of the wall, uh the intonation of a spell. Counterspell. You 
can't see it. Don't you just have to hear it? Nope, you have to hear it and see it. Or see it, I don't know if I have to hear it. Right? I don't know. Or actually, hold on. Which says when you see a creature within 60 feet of you casting a spell. Yeah, because you can't see her. No. She's blocked by the wall. All right. All right. So, let's see. Could I have Cantor spelled the wall? Uh, if you called it in time, yes. Hmm. Well, I didn't know what was happening. Um, what is the damage on this? Oof. to die. Oh, no, there it is. I am going blind. Okay. And you hear Athgar cry out in extreme pain. When Laura unfortunately can fly up to the top of that wall. That's the plan. And kick some ass. Hopefully you won't mind if I Where are we at in Anish? Uh we're at the end of the first round. Cause there's one more thing to happen. Uh oh, I just had to use one of those yet. All right. Uh, we are back to the top of the round and Gwen Lauren. If I fly up to the top of the wall, will it provoke an attack of opportunity? No, because you are not uh, within five feet of any of the bad guys. So. Okay, then I'm going to the top of the wall for my movement. All right. So you go up and you see um, Athgar on the ground. Blood pooling under him. And you see the final guard slashing at the body. Um, can Sigrid help us? Is she that out cold still? She has no spells. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use... I'm going to use my Dread Ambusher skill. 
Okay. Um. And I'm going to use my longbow. Okay. And I'm going to cat uh to I'm going to hit the guard that is hitting Athgar. Okay. Twenty eight to hit. Uh that will hit. Twelve points of regular damage. And then five points of extra damage. Okay. Would you like to roll the D8, or would you like me to roll the D8? For what? Just tell me. I'll roll. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Tell me what you get. Roll to two. Okay. You kill the guard. The D8 was to determine what direction he falls. Okay. Fortunately, he falls back away from Athgar. Do I still have movement left? Um... What's your normal movement? Well, I cast Zephyr Strike, so did I? Uh, you did oh. earlier in the combat. Oh, okay. Um, well, that... Actually, you cast that in the fight with the golems. Okay, so not... So not this time. Okay. Then my regular movement is... Probably 30. 30 feet. Okay, so you have 10 feet of movement left. Okay. So right now you're still where you were. You're just 20 feet up. Right. Um, So each box is five. And I've got 10 feet. Yep. And I'll go here. Basically just over the wall. Okay. But I'm still in the air. Right. Okay. Okay. Zorith, you have a uh, an angry barbarian in your face. What is he wearing? Uh, leather clothing. He's holding battle axe <laughs> in his right hand and a shield in his left hand. I thought it was more like, you know, what are you wearing? <laughs> Khakis. Whatever it is, it's got drool all over it now. Cause and he's, frost. Because he's, he's raging, you know. Gross. That's not a good look. I grab him. Okay. And as I'm shaking him really hard, I cast he's Blight pissed. at fifth level. All right. You need to make an attack roll to get your hands on him. So just d20 plus your... Well, he's close enough to me. I can't just. He will. He will resist. Yeah. So. It's an. It's a d20 plus your proficiency bonus plus your strength bonus. Then I don't put my hands on him like that. I push him like that, and as I push, I'll hit blight. Okay. I think you have to roll the hit for that too, right? No. It's just a con sixteen. It's going to take me a hot minute. How many? Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
35. All right. All right, you see it uh, blacken his skin, and you see uh, a couple sores erupt and rupture. He doesn't seem to notice. As in the necromancy didn't... No, it's just... Because he's berserking, he's not going to notice. Oh, not because it didn't affect him, but because he's like... No, he made the save, and he's raging. So he really isn't paying any attention to damage. Because he's raging. But he took the damage. Why won't you die? And... <laughs> Stupid bitch, it's my Loch Oh, my. Wow. Yeah. Why won't you die? Because, Mr. Creedy, beneath this mask there is more than flesh. Beneath this mask there is an idea. And ideas are bulletproof. Right. Let's see how that works out for you. Uh, Ray of Sick... <laughs> Ray of Sickness. Okay. Uh, this time I rolled a hit. But I got a 15 and 10 makes 25. Does that hit? Yes. Okay. 58. Oh, we like the we like the six and the eight. Two, six, 18. And another eight is 26. 26. Okay. Uh, takes the damage. Oh. And again, doesn't really seem to pay any attention to it. And then I'll say, damn, this is going to hurt. Now it is his turn, and you see uh, he lets out a roar, mm -hmm. and you see a little trickle of blood start from the edge of both eyes. And the first swing misses. The second swing hits. Third swing hits. And you realize that he's moving faster. He just swung at you three times. Mm -hmm. Uh. for 18 points of damage. Okay. Who am I? Okay. Um, right. Um, hold on, I have to look this up. Oh no, I don't, I rolled it. Okay. Shit. Right, um, Arabelle. Gwen Lauren went up over the wall or it's floating? She's floating. She's basically just past the edge of the wall, right up at the top of the wall. You can All see right. me. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I need to shove Tasha and Sigurith out of my way so I'm not trapped in this room anymore. Okay. <laughs> if I can pretty much push them through, can I do that with my movement? Well, with Sigrith, it's not... She offers almost no resistance at all. You can sort of just move her. <laughs> I mean, we had kind of her by our hands, but Tasha hasn't moved, so I'm still trapped. Right, but you can you can muscle by her if she allows it, or you can roll athletics to literally push her out of the way. I'm sure if you yelled move, she'd move. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Alright. Um, so I'm gonna get here. So basically, Sigrith ends up back there. Right. Um, I can't dispel because then I won't be able to revivify. Um... I'm going to come out here. I want to hit this guy. And when Lauren's already had her action this round. Yes. Okay. All right. So I am going to attack the barbarian. I'm not going to get... I'm going to stay here. I come here. I don't want to be in melee with him so that I don't do an attack of opportunity. I will hit him with a second level spell. Guiding Bolt. Mm. If I get in melee, then I'll have an attack of opportunity if I get back out, right? Yes. All right. So I'll hit him from here. I'm going to hit him with a guiding bolt. Okay. First. 25 to hit. That will hit. Five die six. That's 18 points of radiant damage. Okay. And then I want to yell to and say, Gwen, get me over this wall. Which will have to be obviously next round. But... <laughs> right. All right. Uh, Tasha, you go at the same time one of them goes. And you are muted in case you're talking. Not really. You're still muted. You're still muted. Not really. <laughs> Just trying to figure out what I'm doing. Okay. I thought I hit un unmute, but yeah. You know. Um. Let's see. Uh, Gwen, Lauren, Zorath, Tasha, and Arabel. Uh, you need to make dexterity saves. Right now? Yeah. Ooh, good. Good. 26. Oh. We're adding, yeah, 27. Dirty 20, and I will roll for Arabelle. 15 plus, what does she got? Dex? 16. 16. Okay. Uh... How far away? Like. Okay. Zorath is in melee with this thing, right? Yep. All right. Well, then. I'm just gonna move up and do the same. All right, so there's that, and then I need these. 
Okay, yeah. so that was the first. Okay, that was one round. All right, so uh, I'm going to give you the numbers. Everybody made their saves, so take half of this, but you take uh, 10 points of bludgeoning damage and 15 so points of cold damage. So five and, and seven. eight? Five and yeah. seven. As an ice storm begins pounding down on you from above. It gets the guy in front of us too, right? Yep. Okay. Can I go now? Yeah. Um, I rolled a dirty 20 to hit him with my scimitar of speed. Okay, that will hit. Eight points of damage, and then I hit him again. Okay. And I rolled 23. That will also hit. And that's 12 points of damage. Nice. He is starting to slow. Like, he doesn't seem cognizant of the wounds, but his body just se doesn't seem to be responding as fast. <clears throat> He's bleeding from a lot of different places. And I step back. All right. And okay, so just the regular and uh. The three of you inside the wall mm -hmm. need to make a constitution save. Jesus. Oh. Bad for that. So good. 17. 21. <laughs> All right, and if somebody thirty else... twenty for Arabelle. Okay, uh, all of you uh, make the save, so you will take twelve points of poison damage as the entire space fills with a yellow green fog, except where the barbarian is standing. Yep. He's off gassing. The sorcerer has careful spell. So, how many points is that? Twelve. Half of that? No, twelve is half. Okay. It was twenty-five points of damage. And there are no guards left, so we go back to the top. And Gwen Lauren. So you see Gwen Lauren's head whip back and forth between Athgar and Arabelle. And she looks terrified. Um, make a perception check. Uh, 27. You are only about 20 feet away from Athgar. He's not breathing. So I cast Zephyr Strike and I dive for 
Arabelle. Okay. So Zephyr Strike lets you move how much extra? Um, it's it's a bonus action that lets me move. Um, it increases my speed by thirty feet until the end of my turn. Okay. It'll take you twenty feet to get to her. Twenty feet to get back to where you were. So you have another twenty feet. Oh. So you can get down to right beside Athgar. Okay. So that's exactly what I do. So go ahead and move yourself right here. Okay. Um, I still... So that was my my bonus action and my movement, right? Yes. So I still have an action? You do. So I have a... Will a potion help him if he is not breathing? No. He should attack. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will use my longbow to attack the one closest to me. Okay. To us. This guy. All right. Right. That would be the woman in the dirty green cloak. No. Okay. That would be the... Sorry, that would be the dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... She has no idea she's crying. I don't know if that, like, screws up anything. No. Okay, so that is a 29 to hit. Uh, that will hit. And that is 15 points of regular damage plus two points from the extra damage done by Zephyr Strike. Okay. Yeah, you sink it right into the center of her chest. Is she still up? Yep. Ah. TPK, let's do this! Us, not them. <laughs> Thanks for that last part. <laughs> Clarification is important. Right. So, do you have a second attack? Um, uh, with the longbow? Let me think. Um, I... Let me Don't see know. here. Um, Does Athgar have to... Revivify or anything? Well, he can't cast it if he's down. Out right? of curiosity, I don't know what he's got because I can't pull up his thing. Um... Yeah, it says, at 5th level, you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn. Okay. So, so you then always will... get two hits. Okay, good. Thank you for clarifying that, because mm -hmm. it doesn't say, and it's really annoying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I will do that again. Okay. Uh, that would be a... Yeah, a 32 to hit. Okay. That will hit. It's almost like I mean business. Almost. Um, that's 10 more points of damage. And then after my second shot, I'm going to, I would say throw myself over, except I don't want to hurt him further. So I cover so that he can't take more hits. Okay. Um... Would you like to describe her demise? I'm hoping that she got it in the eyeball. Yeah, that's exactly where it went. And she topples back over with a uh, a wet gurgle. Does that affect any of the um, spells that are on us? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, yes, the... Uh, yellow-green fog dissipates. 
But not the ice storm. The ice, ice storm, storm or the wall. No, there's they're both still there. Okay. And um, Jeff, can you move uh, Arabelle? All right, um, Zareth. Okay, one point of thing, because we were trying to finish everything, that healing spell that she would have done, she would have done um, at the end of her turn, that aura of vitality or whatever it is. Yes. On me, before she moved. Okay. Because she had um, to leave, so she was... Go ahead and right. roll 2d6. A four and a five. Okay, so uh, nine plus whatever her bonus is. Five, so that's 14. Yeah, so you get 14 points back. There you go. Okay, question. Mm -hmm. Can I misty step without him taking a provoked attack because it just is remember? Um... You want me to read Misty Step? I'm looking at it. Um, hmm. Because that's how, because I believe that's how um, Ford plays it. If not, I'm going to die. So I just wanted to, just wanted to check. <laughs> You do not, because Misty Step is a teleport, and uh, it says you also don't provoke an attack of opportunity when you teleport. Oh, there you go. So okay. awesome. you do not provoke an attack of opportunity. Now, that can I bad. see how far is covering the um, the ice? How how far of that is covered? What do you mean? I gotta get into semantics here because I need to see to be able to where I'm gonna misty step. Can I misty step back to where Sigrith was? Um, yes. The ice storm is only outside that room. That's a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna misty step. Okay. I'm gonna put myself right there. All right. And. Heal yourself. Can't you? Can you? Do you have, you have a, a potion. potion or something? You should have a potion of greater healing. Hold on, I gotta find that one potion of. I have the potion of healing supreme. <laughs> I don't necessarily Ooh. know if I want to do that. Do it. Do it. No one's going to regret it. Do it. Nope. We've already got one party member down, so... We do. So like, I'm going to take the Potion of Healing Supreme. And that is how many D what? 10 D floor plus 20. Oof. Wow. Pull out all my D4s, which are the hardest to get out of this tray. Yeah, I'm going to have to roll a bunch because I don't have... <laughs> They're not. Well, I have five, so. Oh, well, I'm going to have to roll it a bunch of times. Ugh. Start out with a one. Let's do that. I got 28. Okay, so 28 plus 10? 20. I thought you said oh, 20. Plus 20. Yeah. 48 points. Mm hmm. Uh, that's a lot back to me. Yes. Um, hold on, I can't get out of my. 
that takes me back to full. Um... Okay. Um, well, I've just built myself up and he's he's looking how 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 bad was he looking? He's looking pretty hurt. He's bleeding run. a lot. But I'm going to run back out. Again, he doesn't seem to notice. Right. I'm going to run back out. That should be cuz I was there 5 10 15 20 25. Yeah. Yep. And I am going to Please, sorry guys. It's okay. Blight did actually damage him. He just didn't act like it did, right? Right. He clearly uh, resisted the full effect. Oh, was it a save? Is that one a save? Yes. He saved. Okay. We're gonna do it again at fourth level. All right. And what is his? Um, 16. Uh, con. All right. Uh, you see essentially the same effect again. He's a barbarian. Constitution's one of his saves. So he's still up. Okay. And then I have how much? How much movement? I can never. Okay. Um... You've already moved. Yeah, yeah, I can't get back out of the way. No. no. But hopefully I will at least block him from Tasha. And uh, he is uh, going to attack you. Okay. First one's a miss, second one's a hit. Third one is a miss. For, ooh, wow. For a total of four points of damage. His body really is betraying him. Oh, wow. Damn. All right. Uh, Arabelle. Arabelle is right there. Mm hmm. Um, she's going to put up her shield to kind of like protect him right next to Gwen and okay. turn around with her back to the person. So she's gonna and she's move. She's gonna cast what over here. What? What? I can't yeah. move her. It's okay. I did. He did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So yeah. Just like that. Okay. Um. Yeah, she's putting his thing up. She's going to cast revivify. Okay. And then. She is going to, because she can't double action, but she can do the, she can double action. Uh, reaction, no, 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 no. She's going to impose disadvantage on the attack roll so that he has disadvantage to be hit again. And she's going to pump all of that into that healing spell, the well. 2d6 plus 5. Okay. I might be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, I got a 5 and a 6. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, you, we'll go with yours. Okay. So how much is it total? Plus 11 plus uh, 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 5 is 16. Um... Hold on. Sometimes she can do things.
Are you waiting for me? Yes. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. All right, then Tasha. I hope that's right, Arabelle. So I am going to beat the tiefling. Okay. Before. So you're going to have to move yourself back over to where you're in range. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so 26. That will hit. And try and talk more into the microphone. You're very faint. 26. Okay. And 21. Okay. And 21 points of damage. All right. So would you like to describe his demise? Oh, I sure would. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I slice him through his rib cage, um, and he falls to the ground. All right. With a you sickening thunk. Slash once and completely slice through the skin to the ribs, and the second slash follows the exact same path except the opposite direction and you actually carve through his ribs, through his heart and you see him slump to the ground with the sickening thunk yes yay unfortunately mm -hmm. we can't take this person hostage and figure out, pump them for all the information hmm well, he's dead, so. Yep. Nope, I meant the one that's left. Oh. Well. Yeah. Ooh. If we find somebody that can cast Speak to Dead, uh, can we just parade this person through town and, like, you know, like, go to some place and be like, Speak to Dead and ask them what they were working for? Is that something that we do? Or will we get in trouble for that? I don't know. You can. <laughs> Just checking. Asking for a friend. Right. Um, the, uh, hold on, let me, let me find out here for a moment. Ah, okay. The, remaining person you see them just kind of do this and suddenly they just kind of go and there is a whirling column of air that flies out the window so they leave they escape yep okay and the wall and the everything falls. Oh no, the wall's still there. Wall's permanent. Wall of stone is permanent once it's cast. Oh, that oh, is, is so it? annoying. All right, well, can you misty step with somebody else, or can you only misty step yourself? I can misty step only in places I can see. And uh, let me see where my. I may not be able to misty step it because I. Oh yeah, no, I can misty step. Uh, and I think it's just me. Okay. But when Lauren has, once we get um, Athgar up, when Lauren can. Athgar is waking. Like he got revivified and then he got the healing. Okay. So he so is, then... his eyelids are fluttering. Okay, so I don't know how she does this very well. But she's going to use a healing kit. Right. Okay. Oh, she uses the healing kit to actually heal, though. Yeah, it's uh, it's a feat that she has. Thank you. Ah. 
I have a potion of greater restoration, and I'm going to pour that down his throat. Uh, I don't think that'll do anything. It won't do anything? No. Not wait, no. no. Greater re- sorry, greater healing. Oh, greater healing. Okay. Yes. That's, that's what I she think meant. she that's... might be able to give she might be able to give him more points than that will actually what you do you boo. Let me let me look real quick. It's 4d4 plus 4. Hold on, let me look and see. Um Oh, there we go. Yes. Uh, As an action, you can spend one use of a healer's kit to tend to a creature and restore 1d6 plus 4 hit points plus additional hit points equal to the creature's maximum number of hit dice. So for Athgar, it would be 1d6 plus 16. And then she'd heal him. Yep. So go ahead and roll a d6. This one I don't roll against you because this is not magical. I got a six. Okay, so that's 22. 22. And then she's got the ability to... Is everybody else um, needing healed? I am, but I'm not worried about that right now. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, I just want to check. Okay, so she's going to give him 22, and then how much is he down? Uh, still more than half. Okay, so then she's gonna do that whole... What's the one that's like 50 points or whatever she's got? Heal. Hold on, yeah, the spell is just called Heal, but I don't know if she has that slot level left. No, oh, no, I just saw something that was in a feature of traits. And... While she's working on that, can I dump the potion down his throat? Sure. You can, sorry. Sure. Okay. And what Lay is it? Lay on hands. So she gives him back 50 points. Well, she's used some of it. Because she used... Uh, five to cleanse the poison out of uh, okay. Sigrith, and then 12 to heal Sigrith. So she's used 17 of that pool so far today. Okay. So but, is... Gwen Lauren, how many D is it? It's D, uh, 4D4 plus 4. 4D4 plus so... 4. So go ahead and roll 44. I did. All right. I got a total of 10. All right, so I got 11 plus 4. Okay, so, so 15. 15. And 33. Uh, brings him one point under max. Are his eyes open yet? Yeah. Oh, they were open when she... Well, they were fluttering. The they were fluttering after the Revivify and the uh, Aura of Valor or whatever it was. So, yeah. So then she- yeah, so he he kind of, like, finally opens his eyes, and he's just laying there, like... And I yell at him, You asshole. All you had to do was stay behind me. What were you thinking running out there like that? Go ahead. And while she's yelling... Casting the spell. <clears throat> Why is my throat strange? <clears throat> I punch him in the arm, stand up, and go back to the wall. Ow. <clears throat> um, Ow. You'll I need go to... over the wall. Okay. Yeah, to bring everybody out. Have and to bring me out. once she brings everybody out, um, we're going to give air, aura of vitality to everybody to see if we can kind of, because she's got that up for a minute. Okay. So that was, that was third round, I think fourth round. 
So she's got it's ten rounds, right? For a minute. I think so. Okay, so she's got six more. So, uh, who's down what? I'm down like twenty nine points. All right. Tasha? I rolled a seven for the first one. Okay, so Glen Lauren was, you got seven. That was better than my roll. And so then that is seven. Um, right? Twelve. Oh, twelve. Okay. Yeah, so 2d6 plus five is twelve. All right. Second roll, I got a five. Second roll, I got a six. Okay. So that's eleven. That brings you closer, right? So is it 12 plus 11? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty close to being fully healed. Down like eight points. Tasha? Yeah. Six points. Um, I rolled an eight. We'll use that one because that's way better. Eight plus... I cannot remember what it is. I think you said five? Eight plus five. Yeah, I every time I'm because I'm on like multiple tabs. Sure. So that's so, thirteen. Sure. Yeah. Thirteen. And then uh rolled ten that time. Oh, that's great. So fifteen. I'm I'm healed. And then five. she's gonna use it on herself. I rolled a five. I rolled a six plus five is 11. And then that should take her. She's down two points. Okay. Then you want to use the last one on Gwen because she's still down six. Oh, she's still down. Yeah. Just yeah, a little. It's just six. Okay. How is, um, yes, I'd like to do it again. And I got a six plus five. I got five an 11. 11. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled an oh, 11. You rolled an 11? A six and a five. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So then 16. And that is it. And, um... All right. Athgar is slowly climbing to his feet. So I start bringing people over the wall, and when I get it on your side of the wall, you see me looking angrier than you have ever seen me while still... Tears are still running down my face, but pissed. He's okay. He's an idiot. Yes. But he's also okay. I will never forgive him for this. You will. Eventually. This is ridiculous. I don't know why he's here. Because we told him he could come. I fly her back over the wall. <laughs> Is everybody on the ground? Yeah. Yes. We're all fine. Okay, so I am over here. And I am mad. All right. I'm going to start piling all of the bodies in a corner. Okay. Pulling all the bodies in the corner closest to uh, when Lauren. Maybe we should just leave and the bodies can be dealt with later. I really I... would like Sigrith to be okay I... and not in here anymore. I think we should. <clears throat> wow. What happened? My voice is terrible. You almost died. That's what happened. Well, you did die, you moron. No, nah. that's no, I, no, I didn't. Did I? Yeah. Who, who are you being? Athgar. He's being Athgar. I'm being Athgar. Oh, well then, yes. You almost died. Arabelle says, 
you did die, and I cast Revivify on you. Um. Which is hard to do from the other side of the wall. What? Wall? What? Oh my God. Okay, let's not have Where this conversation. We need to go. We need to go now, uh, Athgar. We will we will talk about this later when you are fully recovered. Uh, Let's okay. go. All right. I can't recover from stupidity. Let's go. Now, oh. how are you getting out? I have to carry each one of you people over the up to the window again. Mm. Not me, because I can fly. Okay. You better carry Athgar. I am likely to drop him on his head. Okay, so I cast fly on Asgar. Then he can carry you. No. Yeah, he could. But I'm not going to let him right now. Because he's too discombobulated. He'd probably drop her. So I cast fly on Athgar. You're going to make him fly himself? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can you and can you cast that more than once? Is that in, isn't that in the loot? It is. Then you can only cast it once. I can also cast levitate. I can levitate myself. Yeah. And you so can they... you can levitate yourself up and pull yourself out through the window and then levitate down. That'll work. Mhm. So, I cast fly on Athgar and let him go out. I'm. And, I can carry someone. Nope. Just go out the window, please. I'm gonna go first and carry. Um, what's your name? Sigrith. 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 Okay. And I will open the sash, unlatch the shutters, open the shutters, and lower her gently to the ground. Okay. And I, and then Afgar goes out. Okay. And I stand guard over the two of them until um, Tasha. And then I get comes. out. Then I'll go back in and get um, Zori and then Arabelle. Okay. And um, on my last trip, I lower the sash and close the shutters. All right. Try to buy us a little time at least before they find the bodies. And then we go to the ship. Um, and let's see if I have any spells left. I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. Which will veil us in shadows and silence masking me and my companions from detection. So within 30 feet of me, everybody has dex bonuses um, to self and can't be tracked except by magical means. We leave no tracks or other traces of passage. Okay. And we hightail it out of here. And we, we go to the spray. We need to like cover up the snow no, or- we leave, no, we leave no trace. And not even in snow. Okay, cool. Nope. Nope. All right. And as you leave from the warehouse and slowly but confidently make your way back toward the Clever Sprite, that's where we're going to stop. Whew. What a fight. Did we level? <laughs> yes, you did, actually. That was the <gasps> next thing I was going to say. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. You are now Thanks. 12th level. We are 12th level, bitches. <gasps> the blazes. <laughs> you super tried to kill us all. I'm just saying. Wow. I didn't super try to kill us all. No, I no, no. Not you. Him. Oh, I was like, me. I tried to talk our way out of it. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you. You were great. I loved the trash talking. That was amazing. I, I was down to 27 hit points. Gwen felt bad leaving you on that side of the wall, but 
She had to. He was down. I mean, you know. Yep. I almost, I almost put a wall of ice between us and them, but I don't know. Then it was kind of like, are they going to go hire guards? Or like, are they going to go call for guards? Are we going to be able to? Right. We can only rope trick for an hour, and so I mean, right. how do you get out of there? Acid, acid cut, acid That's... eat the wall. That's an interesting question. I'll have to look that up. Um, what? Uh, rope trick creates a 10 by 10 extra dimensional space. Right. Yes. You need to make a 10 foot circle to use teleportation circle. Yeah, I know. Could you make a teleportation circle inside a rope trick? It's a trick? space. Why couldn't you? I'll you have can to, cast I'll have spells to, in I'll, there. I'll have, to look, I'll have to figure that out. Uh, I thought about it. I thought about it. Uh, in in her little room that she was in. Mm -hmm. But it would take us way not where we wanted to be. But it would have taken us to the tower. But we would have made it back. But if we could have, if I would have done a ro wall. Um. They wouldn't have been able to get to us, and I would oh, have had time. Nope. It no. only travels on the same plane of existence as you are currently in. Oh. And being in an extra dimensional space. You don't want that. No. That would be bad. Yeah. Um. Well, I can't wait to find out why they wanted her so badly. Well, we know why, yeah. but I want to know who. Yeah. Okay, well, we I, uh, Gwen doesn't know why. Yeah, we have an idea. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much for hanging in with us a little bit longer than normal, but, you know, big fight. Um, we will be back next Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. So, until then, stay safe, stay sane, stay healthy. Do the right thing for the other people in your life in terms of wearing a mask and vaccinations and all of that. And uh, hopefully you'll still be around next Tuesday and you'll let us welcome you back to the lands of a Good night, everybody. Happy Halloween. Bye, everybody.